I've started working with JavaScript and SVG together. So I want to show you a little bit of what I've done with it first, some of my experimentation, and then I'll show you exactly how to get started with it after that. So if we go to uh, my GitHub uh, page instead of repository, here we have an SVG. This is created with an online tool so I can zoom in or zoom out and it will still look nice because it's drawing from the vectors uh, themselves and not uh, a pixel grid. It's got interactivity too. I've attached JavaScript functions to different aspects of this, to different parts that I can click on and then it will do whatever I've told it to do in that function. Now there's a little of other stuff going on in here too that I'm not going to get into directly with this video but we'll talk about some of it a little bit more later on. We'll start pretty simple. I made a second version that's a little bit fancier. I think the first version is a little bit better for people uh, just starting programming because uh, you kind of have to figure out which languages are compiled versus which ones are interpreted. Uh, but this one I think is a little bit more impressive as far as uh, the behaviors go since some things disappear and reappear. And here's the source code, right? So since this is all client side, you can view the source and see how I did it. So uh, you have here an SVG tag. And if I scroll all the way back up to the start, all of that is the SVG code mostly. But inside of here, there's a few function calls to JavaScript. And if we move a little bit further down, here we go. So after the SVG tag, here are these functions are. Uh, written in JavaScript. And none of it's very complicated. They're just document.getElementById's like we've played with already earlier uh, with set attributes. So just referring to parts of the SVG code instead of to elements of the HTML page itself. And that works as long as your SVG is embedded into the HTML page. You can make this with like something fancy like Adobe Illustrator or you can use online tools, right? So I'm using this online tool here, Method Draw. I'm just going to start out with some basic rectangles, nothing too complex. I'm going to make a less complex thing for the starter and we can do some fancier stuff later on. So you've got some options over here on the right, so I'm going to use one of them to make the stroke a little bit wider. Let's try to get this in the middle. And I'm going to make another rectangle inside of there. Uh, well, more of a square, really. So I'm going to hold shift to lock the proportions. And let's see, maybe around here. We'll, uh, actually, I don't want to change the stroke. I want to get rid of it. There we go. And change the color. Uh, we're going to do RGB. So this one will be red. I'll copy paste. This one is going to be green. If I hold shift, it locks it on the vertical axis. And uh, let's see, I'll just type it in because I want like perfect green. So if I put FF in the middle instead of on the start, and one more, copy, paste, hold shift, this one will be blue. And once again, I'll go in and directly modify the hex code uh, to make it the perfect blue. Um, there we go, they look fine. If I look on the right, their values all seem to match on the x-axis, so they're all lines. Alright, I think these look good. Now what I want to do is group them together. So I can click all of them, holding shift, and right click and tell them to group. And then I'm going to give them a slight stroke. So maybe a little bit more, kind of around there. I think that, I think that's nice. And then I'll add a text box. And then, oh, wait a moment. Actually, uh, I don't want to have that stroke grouped because depending on what the code looks like, it might apply that stroke to the group and not the individual. And I don't want that for uh, possible changes later. So we'll add in some text. Nothing too complex. We'll just say pick a color on the left and uh, maybe some arrows to help give a, a visual cue and uh, around there-ish and if I highlight and choose the color picker I can modify it a little bit so we're not quite black maybe a little lighter, I think it's still a little dark comparison to the border I think that looks alright 
and then I can copy it and uh, drag another one down here. And then this will say you picked, and um, I'm not going to put the color here, I'm going to put the color in a separate one because I want it to have a separate ID tag to be able to refer to in the JavaScript. So, or maybe, maybe instead uh, this is, um, maybe that language is better. I can make this a little bit bigger with this with the tools on the right, and then uh, actually I don't like 29. Let's go to 30, a nice round number, and we'll change this to that same value so they match. Kind of uh, center it around here-ish. That looks about center, and I'll copy paste. And this one will have the name of the color, so it can be red to start with. Actually, you know what? Let's do green. Let's do the largest of them first. I think that works a little bit better. I can click on them and use alignment, or I can hold shift and click on them both together, and that will align them together. So something like that. Maybe put a little space in between. Maybe I'll make the uh, a color cube in the middle that matches. And you know, I think I want this to be inside of its own box to kind of separate it from that top. So I'll click on it and uh, notice that it's on top so I can move it out of the way and tell the text to go in front. Right now you can't see it because they match in the same color, but if I change the color with a color picker, there we go. And uh, maybe um, a slight, no, hmm. I don't know, do I want a stroke? Let's see, does that look good? I think I like that, but actually I think the stroke would look a little better. About there, I think that looks good. Let's lighten it a little bit. I think that looks nice. And we can adjust these a little bit. Right around there-ish. Okay, I'm going to grab this color tall, but I'm going to go inside of it because I was like the whole group. So if I double click, then Command C, I have to click out of it just like if I clicked into it. I can paste. And uh, I think that all looks pretty good. So I can now group these, which I want them to all be together. And oh, interesting, it doesn't let me group them all together. All right, so. I can group the text, or I can group this, the rectangles, but I can't group them all. So I'll group the text for now, and then I'll group the rectangles. And that should be enough, and I can modify them in the SVG code. Now I'll um, save this, and uh, now I've downloaded the code. There are some other tools, but I like this one because the code is uh, pretty legible. It's not the cleanest, but it's pretty legible. So I'll drag this to my desktop, and now I can open it with Atom. So I'll open Atom, and I'll just drag it in there. And that should work. Um, there we go. And so here you can see the code. Let's close that. Close these other ones. And you can see the code here. So it looks a lot like HTML, which is really nice, because that makes it pretty legible. Now there are a lot of attributes in here and a lot of them aren't needed, uh, but that's okay. So first thing, let's put a soft wraps on because um, that's a pain to scroll over. So here it is. And there's one more thing we might want. So I've got this package here for a SVG preview, but you might not have it. So to add it, you'll need to go to your preferences and go to um, install and type in SVG, and it's probably the first one, but you can type in preview if you need the rest. Here it is. I don't have the install button because I already have it installed, uh, but you can go ahead and hit install, and then from there, once it's done, you should see SVG up here in the uh, packages options. So now if I turn it on, I can see what I'm actually working with, and that's convenient. Uh, I can make that a little bit smaller, a little bit bigger, depending on how much space I need. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the sidebar, just so I have a little more room to work with. And uh, let's move this around a little bit. So this is pretty legible for the most part. So we've got rectangle elements, which are the rectangles. And if I modify the color codes, then we can see in the preview what they align with. 
I've got some groups which just contain other things, and uh, that can be useful when we want to modify quite a few things. I've got another rectangle here. If I change the code, uh, you can see it there. It's easiest to change that first value, right? If we change the second value, it's not as obvious. Um, but if we go and change the first value, because these two digits represent 255 values, um, that first one makes a big difference in that color. So we can quickly change that to see where we're modifying. Alright, so now I can rename these to kind of match where in the SVG we're actually modifying. I think that will help. So we'll make these um, blue, green, red. Um, actually, let's make them square and then the color just so we don't conflict with other things, make it a little more clear. I'm going to make the whole group square colors. Now this text doesn't have an ID tag, but I can easily add one. Although I don't need to modify that, I need to modify something else. Let's see. Uh, we've got these colors down here. Um, we can modify these groups to put them together. So I've got the text and the squares. And uh, we'll just put them all together into one group. Um, oh, I don't see my text. What? Ha oh, I see what happened. Okay. So in an SVG and on anything client side, right, the top of the document loads before the bottom of the document. So since the text was above, the squares loaded second to the text, and so that's why you couldn't see them. So even back in method draw, it's probably the same way. Yeah, there you go. See, you can't see it there either. So if we just switch the order, now we can see them. And we can change this ID for the whole thing to like info box. Then I could hide the whole box and everything in if I wanted to until they click on it. And then I can modify the individual IDs. So let's modify those. So maybe this one is like color name, which is where the word green is. And um, which one is this? The text. I don't really need to change that text, but I do need to change the rectangles above it. So which one is this? That's my box. That's what I want to change. And we'll call that maybe color box just to make it clear and simple. Don't get fancy with your names. You want to keep it just basic and easy to remember and call on. So if we want this to work with JavaScript, we need to embed all this inside of an HTML page. So really easy. Just scroll up to the top, add an HTML tag, add some header tags, open the body, and then we'll just close the body after all the SVG code and then close the HTML and that's it. We can right click up here and tell it to rename and then uh, we can make this, well I'm going to go ahead and shorten it because I don't need it to be that long and then we can call it .html instead and uh, now it still all works. Preview still works so I can modify this and it still changes but now we can actually write some JavaScript. We're not going to do anything super complex because we're just going to write some simple functions that modify some of those attributes. So let's move down to some of the things that we actually want um, to trigger some JavaScript. So we'll move down to my colored square. So here's red. Right after the ID tag, just to make it simple, I'll add the onClick um, attribute. And inside of here is going to be my function name. So maybe like call red and then parentheses and that will then connect to the JavaScript. I'll go ahead and copy it and I'm just going to modify it to say call green and then one more and this will be call blue. So simple patterns to make it easy um, to uh, make the different functions later. Come down here at the bottom outside of the SVG tag add in a script tag. This is where our JavaScript will go. Inside of there we can write a few functions. So we write function and then the name of the function, call red, parentheses, open curly brackets. We'll add in a line break and we'll type document dot get element by ID. And then in parentheses there, that little green bit, that's where we need to refer to the actual element ID we want to modify, right? 
So here, this needs to be color box because that's what I want to change. And then dot set attribute. And then parentheses, the name of the attribute I want to modify which here is the fill, and then comma, and then another set of quotes, the actual value that I want to go into that attribute. So uh, for this, it needs to be a color code, a hex value. So um, we'll make it into red, so FF0000. And if we open with Chrome and we try it, it should, well, that's not red, that's uh, purple what did I do oh okay so I said red but I accidentally typed the code for magenta so if we try again refresh it save it there we go so that worked we also want to modify the text so we'll add a semicolon and another line we'll do another document dot get element by ID this time we are looking for the color name so in here we'll type color name um, why is it white? Oh, I missed my, my quotes, I accidentally glued those, so color, name, and then after that, dot, and this is going to instead be inner HTML, because we're not changing an attribute, we're changing what's inside uh, the, well, in this case, it's SVG, right, but inner HTML, we use the same tag for it still, and then equals, and inside of quotes, the actual string that we want it to say, and close it with the semicolon, if we refresh and try it out, there we go. So it says this is red. Uh, now it's a little offset. It's not where I want it to be. So uh, let's see what the SVG tag is to center text. Because that's essentially the issue, right? The green was centered, but red is a shorter string. So we need it to be centered. Um, so that way they all are aligned with the middle of that rectangle. So there's the code for that. There's the attribute. And we can add it inside of this text tag. So that should work. I save it and refresh. Okay. Uh, no, that didn't work. Why? Let's see. Okay, we actually already have a text anchor inside of this tag. So that's why. So let's instead modify that from start to middle after deleting the one we added. So now if we try it. Okay, so it's centered. Now we just need to change the X value. So we'll go in here, uh, that's the Y value, just kidding, here's the X, there we go, and if we save it, uh, almost, there we go, 355 looks right. Now yours might be different because, well, I mean, it depends on the size of your squares. Alright, so we can copy and paste that in here twice more, and we can just modify these function calls instead of writing them from scratch. This will be called green and this will be called blue and then we'll modify these codes so uh, green's value is 00FF00 and blue's value is 0000FF like RGB right and then we can modify these to match so this will say green instead of red and this will say blue instead of red and if we refresh them there we go And that's essentially it. We have now connected JavaScript functions to SVG code. It's really not too hard. Now, there's a lot of cooler stuff you can do with it, but for now, that's a basic video, and I'll show some more advanced stuff and some neat little tricks and stuff you can do with it in future videos.